Good morning, everyone. Oh, I can't, just go off, off. I can't stay in for a little while. There we go. Hello and welcome to St Mary's Church, Little Travers. My name is Stephen Partridge. I'm the vicar here. Uh, and uh, what well, happy St Valentine's Day. Uh, look at that. I invited my lovely wife Carrie down here for a Valentine's Day uh, time together. Um, some of you, if you're in the village, you may have received one of these um, Valentine. I don't know if you can see that, but perhaps you can't. Is that visible at all? There we go. Uh, no, the chocolate hasn't been eaten yet. Uh, a Valentine's card from the Litchie Angels, who uh, organise a lot of the uh, uh, support that's going on in these times around uh, around the village, uh, and they've had this uh, idea to uh, to to to. to um, to share share the love um, and uh, so well done for them we continue to pray for them for the work they do Lisa and Juliet are the, uh, the two key key people who do that and they've got this uh, hashtag uh, not that I know much about hashtags but their hashtag is love lich it I thought it was great uh, to, to encourage people to to, to share together within the community. Hopefully, whatever community you're part of as well, there'll be a sense of that uh, joining together and just keeping that that in our in our minds really before, so so we don't let it let it slip. I wanted to add to that actually. Hashtag love litchit. I wanted to, to to develop that. I might have put it on my, my email. Some of you receive. I can't remember. Uh, hashtag God loves litchit, uh, and that's something I'll, I'll mention a bit later on about how we can help people. Sense God's love through this uh, through through Lent, which is beginning soon, but more notices later on. I didn't do my opening sentences, did I? I got distracted by the scarf, and then I was drawn into the Valentine's Day. Uh, but um, so I better do that now, because I know it would be a shame to, to miss that. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome again. Uh, uh, to this service of uh, Holy Communion. Obviously, I've got the, the communion things here. We haven't got anyone else here apart from carrying myself, uh, but I hope it's uh, uh, encouraging for you and, and thank you for taking the time to join us this morning and be part of this stream. There's details below how you can subscribe to our new sheet if you want to or find more details of that out about the church if you want to do that. Um, there's also, if you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe as well. I don't often say that, but, but there is the possibility of that. Uh, I did mention it, I think, wasn't it, last week, that we've got 50 subscribers, uh, which, is, which is what it is. But anyway, bless you. Uh, let's continue uh, with a moment's quiet, and then we'll pray the prayer of preparation together. do that and in fact before the prayer preparation let us sing our opening uh, opening hymn <laughs> but, uh, I've just, just been pointed out that, that it'll be good I'm not not quite on board today I don't know what it is but anyway uh, uh, we're celebrating it's the, it's the Sunday before Lent uh, the, we're remembering the transfiguration today and so this hymn really draws us into that, that event in some ways. Christ whose glory fills the skies. Let's sing together before we pray our prayer.
So let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Call it for this, the Sunday next before Lent. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to hear our two readings for today, uh, for the first is uh, Sheila, I think, and then uh, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, this reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 3 to 6. For if the gospel we preach is hidden, it is hidden only from those who are being lost. They do not believe because their minds have been kept in the dark by the evil God of this world. He keeps them from seeing the light shining on them. The light that comes from the good news about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. For it is not ourselves that we preach. We preach Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. The God who said, out of darkness the light shall shine, is the same God who made his light shine in our hearts to bring us the knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of the Lord according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain, where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what he, to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. 
This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of God, man, had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So last week we glimpsed God's uh, uh, glory through Jesus in a, at his baptism uh, and this week uh, it's the transfiguration that brings uh, another glimpse of, uh, of who, who he is. Let's pray and then I will speak a bit more. Heavenly Father we thank you that you come and we pray that you would take our minds and think through them. Take uh, my words and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. As uh, we read about Jesus uh, uh, being dazzling white, it, it made me uh, begin to, to, to think through all the depictions of Jesus that, that I recall. Uh, and I thought, hang on a minute, Jesus always is, is always looking white, isn't he? Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and I remember that uh, for my uh, school assemblies, when I, when I was, used to be able to go into to the school, uh, I think I haven't been in for, for over a year now, uh, the, the basics, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the layout of my assemblies is, is basically tell a, tell a story, tell a Bible story, and get the children out to help me teach that, to, to tell the story, because I know they'll, they'll, they'll watch one another uh, more than they'll watch me or listen to me. And if Jesus is in the story, I always take this old uh, tablecloth, and this is the this is the Jesus scarf. Actually, there we go. I'm a black scarf on. Uh, and and whoever is Jesus in the story wears this, so that those who are watching, the children who are watching, know uh, which one is Jesus and, and where Jesus is and what Jesus is doing. And because um, uh, I thought, yeah, Jesus usually wears white and then uh, as I was thinking about that this week I thought well, let's have a little look and I, and I googled some images of Jesus and found that uh, yeah there's there's quite a large uh, uh, body of, of work that does depict Jesus wearing white but generally it, the idea is to try and make him stand out from the from the crowd so sometimes in films or, or, or in pictures Jesus is wearing some kind of white uh, but it, it, the idea is so that we know who is Jesus among everyone else. And uh, I looked at some paintings as well and saw that actually he doesn't always wear white, that, that some painters depicted him in, in, in blue or red, and, and there's another whole uh, uh, interpretation about the different colours that we used. So I went back to, well, what did, what was Jesus really wearing back in those days? Because often people kind of, put on what they think of as, as current now. Uh, and research has been done to show that probably people of that time would have worn very simple uh, sandals. Jesus would have worn simple sandals and then a, a, a tunic, probably an unbleached uh, tunic made of, of wool of some sort that would have gone down, gone down just, below his, just below his knees, a bit like my shorts. Wouldn't have gone uh, much uh, longer because it would have got in the way of moving around. I think uh, women had a bit longer. So it would have been a tunic, sandals, and then maybe a scarf of some sort. We do read in the passage where the woman touches the tassels of his uh, robe or, or, or mantle of some sort that he would have had something over the top, but probably not bright white. So the, the picture I, I've sort of painted for myself uh, and, and to share with you is that Jesus looked quite ordinary, probably a bit, you know, off-white, uh, unbleached wool tunic, maybe a similar colour scarf, perhaps it was uh, coloured in some way, simple sandals. He would have blended in uh, with, with the others. And to me that makes this transfiguration even more incredible, that he would have walked up with Peter, James and John up to the mountain 
and then uh, looking very much like them uh, and then this amazing event where he is dazzling white and Mark reports how bright he appears. A glimpse of his glory for Peter, James and John. And then there's more. They see uh, Moses stood next to him, the one who, who gave the law, the one who was the, the leader, the exemplary leader for God's people. And the one who had his own experience of, of glowing with God's glory when he, he met in the presence of God and he went down to the Israelites and they said, oh, cover, cover your face, you're so bright. And so too, Elijah was stood there as well. Goodness me, Peter, James and John must have thought, this is a, a, an incredible sight. Elijah, the prophet, but also the herald of a victory that would come when the Messiah came. And perhaps that was linking in with Peter and he's building the booths for, for them. He doesn't really know what to do, what to say. So Peter, James and John see this amazing thing. You'd imagine them saying, wait till we get down and tell the others what we've seen. But as they walk down the mountain, Jesus effectively says, shh, mum's the word. Do not tell anyone of this. It was verse 9. Say, as they were coming down the mountain he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the son of man had risen from the dead and there's that sense in which even jesus can't stay at the top of the holy mountain in that cloud of glory he has to descend down along with the disciples to the valley the valley of suffering and struggle and he's drawn to think on on what he's got to face Yes, he says, uh, you mustn't speak of this until uh, the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The implication being the Son of Man has got to, to die before he can rise. Jesus is, is telling them again of his death. He's already spoken to them about that. And they're still struggling to, to piece together what this means. Uh, but for him, it was very much death uh, and suffering intertwined with life and glory. The mountaintop uh, and the valley low uh, uh, both part of that experience, the human experience that he lived for us to show his connection with us as I was speaking a bit about last, uh, last week, to identify with us. But also we see in this passage his identity uh, as uh, divine as well in God's voice over him and, and the presence of Moses and Elijah indeed as well. So what, uh, what, what did this mean for the disciples? Well, for them, it was about preparing them for that valley of struggle, for the way of the cross, giving them a glimpse that they would hang on to in their hearts and their minds as they went through the next difficult uh, uh, passage, difficult chapter. For us, it prepares us for the time of Lent as we uh, uh, recognise all that Jesus did and, and who he was uh, we journey through Lent uh, and, in a sense, the way of the cross for us uh, through uh, Good Friday and on to Easter Sunday. And it's a reminder that we can trust God. That he'll, give us, he'll give us glimpses of his working uh, and encourages us to, to trust him and to recognise him as the, the faithful one. He knows what he's doing. And the key for us is perhaps to do what Peter James and John did and to stay close to Jesus and recognize that Jesus doesn't look different from them in, in, in his uh, physical uh, appearance perhaps but he stands out by the words he speaks uh, and the deeds that he does words and deeds we can continue to to read about and to draw strength and encouragement and inspiration from Listen to him, says God. Not look at him, but listen to him. Listen to his words. Recognise that that's what sets him apart. And that's what we're called to do. Stay close to him and learn uh, what he's calling us uh, to do and to, to be in these times. And we see him led by the Spirit and always uh, 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 wanting to draw close to the heart of God and that is for us too and so as we come into Lent the challenge well I wonder if you're taking that the challenge of giving something up I haven't quite decided yet 
<coughs> it's always tempting. There always seems to be a lot of chocolate around if I try and give up chocolate. But uh, perhaps there's another way forward as well. Maybe give something up, but also uh, let's perhaps uh, balance that with, with giving something out as well. And uh, to that end, uh, we've got together uh, some ideas. Some people of, of, of some some uh, people, great people in the church, have put together some ideas to encourage us to to give out this uh, uh, this Lent, to to uh, to help that. My idea of the hashtag: God loves Litchit, to show God's love wherever we are in in, in our community here or, or wherever you are, to find the words and the deeds that will help point to Jesus uh, and to God and to his love. So uh, that's, uh, I've sent an email out, but if you, if you want more detail, uh, get, get in touch and I'll send another email out middle of this week. And from Ash Wednesday onwards, there'll be an opportunity to, to read about a suggested uh, uh, action that we might do. It might be using words or deeds or, or giving away something physical to someone else, but it's about giving out uh, as well as giving up through this time of Lent. So we can all play our part uh, and, uh, and, and shine uh, for Jesus, the one who shines in us uh, and we want him to shine through us. Let us pray now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, that he came to identify with us, to walk with us, to walk with us through the valley of struggle, but also give us a glimpse of the mountain top of glory. And as we uh, focus in on, on how we're going to spend this, this time of Lent, this time of focus on you, help us to draw closer to you, but also help us to learn from the words and deeds of Jesus and to, uh, to find our own way of sharing your love with the world. Help us to be inspired by things around us uh, and inspired by your word. And most of all, Lord, may we be led by your spirit. May that be the light uh, that leads us on. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to share a song now that, that is a song very much about uh, us putting ourselves in the position to, to serve God, just as Paul reminds us in his, uh, his, the passage we heard from him today. Uh, this is taken, uh, a song that hopefully many of you will know, uh, taken from Isaiah's famous words to God, Here I am, Lord. Or him up here, yeah, here I am, Lord. Uh, by the Lord of sea and sky. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I have made the stars of Is it? 
continue by affirming our faith in the words of the Creed, our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we're going to have our prayers of intercession that Trevor has recorded. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we learn from Mark how Peter, James and John witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus in the presence of Elijah and Moses, an occasion that confirmed Jesus was truly the Son of God. Jesus' disciples were instructed by God that they should listen to him. Lord, we should listen to you through the scriptures, through worship and prayer, through other people, or when we are alone. During these present troubling times, when we feel threatened by the COVID virus, help us to understand what is happening to us, both physically and mentally, we pray for the sick and give thanks for those who put their own lives at risk to protect others. We praise your Son, our Saviour, who cared deeply for all those who suffer. Give comfort, Lord, to those who have lost family members and friends. Give wisdom and courage to politicians, doctors, scientists and nurses. We are thankful that a vaccine programme is underway but pray that poorer countries are not disadvantaged compared to wealthier nations. No doubt it is true that nobody is safe until everyone is safe. We give thanks, Lord, for our village during lockdown and appreciate that we are blessed with lovely country walks that keep us fit and refresh our daily lives. It is good when we pass others who are also on their daily walks. We pray for those who find lockdown especially difficult, that you are there to give them strength and reassurance. We pray for other countries, such as Myanmar, where the military junta have once again seized power and detained their democratically elected leader, Aung San Suu Kyi. Give courage and hope for those who are protesting against their military rulers. We pray for Russia at a time when thousands of citizens, tired of living in a police state, are facing severe brutality for demonstrating against the government. We are fortunate, Lord, to live in a country where we have a mature and caring democracy that respects and protects the individual. Give support, Lord, for children, teachers and parents as they work hard to teach children during lockdown. We pray that home teaching is manageable for parents. 
We also pray for teachers who have the difficult task of preparing lessons, both for children in the classroom and for remote learning at home. Let us hope, Lord, that in future, children and teachers will be able, again, to freely interact with one another, rather than be restricted by COVID. We are thankful, Lord, that we have been able to continue attending worship at St Mary's Church over the last few months, either by social distancing or by virtual online services. Although we are not worshipping face to face, Lord, we should appreciate that nothing can separate us from the concern and love of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Trevor. So we continue by uh, uh, coming to the time of the peace. If we were in church, I'd say uh, do stand if you're comfortable and able to do so. Feel free to do that if you want to. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Do offer one another a sign of peace, those around you or uh, digitally to to others who uh, you connect up with. to share uh, Christ's peace uh, whenever we can, when we're out and about. As, as Trevor was praying, it's great when we can meet up with others uh, by chance as we're, as we're moving around uh, out for our walks and things. So we go as, as the, the, the people of peace. Thank you to all those who are continuing to support the church, both in terms of uh, connecting up with with services, with prayers, connecting up and serving those who are around them, but also in the the financial uh, donations we've received, which are uh, helping us to continue uh, planning and focusing on on the future. We uh, seek to draw from uh, God all all, all, uh, the steps forward that we take uh, as a church in, in terms of mission and ministry, uh, we're continuing our project to, to uh, create an accessible space here, flexible but also uh, sympathetic to the wonderful uh, building that we've been, uh, uh, we've been given to, to care for in this time and, and hand on to the next generation. So we've got plans to, to, to renew all the electrics and, uh, uh, and, and put a proper AV system in. Uh, amongst other things and uh, we, we're grateful for, for those people who, who are given donations for, for, for that practicality but also the everyday uh, bills and, uh, and paying for, for my ministry and the connection with the Diocese of Salisbury so thank you for uh, all that you are uh, supporting us with and the ways you're supporting us um, but just to say of course in these times if, if you are in need of support yourself then do please seek out that support we've got the the literate angels in our village here who do an amazing job and and others as well uh, who support uh, both people practically but also financially and uh, uh, and in that way so uh, do seek out the support uh, either for you or for those that you know who are, are struggling in these times there is support out there for the gifts that that have been given at this time. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty for everything 
in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that we can count each day, even in times of difficulty, even through the valley of suffering. We can still count our blessings and Lord, as we uh, offer ourselves and, and our blessings to you, we pray that you would guide us uh, and use what we give uh, back uh, to your glory, to, to draw more into knowing your love for them uh, and that you would further your work and ministry and mission from this place and, and in our communities. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, using the Eucharistic prayer, E. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. Taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, a loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. It is our tradition here of St Mary's for each one to say the Lord's Prayer that means the most to them. I'll leave the modern form, but I'll try and leave the space. And if there's a more traditional form you know by heart, then please do uh, use that. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near to him with faith. Spiritually receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you in his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We say together, 
We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Christ shed for each one of us. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is a, a modern, uh, modern hymn. What we have next, isn't it? Yeah. One that takes me back to my uh, licensing here, actually, four and a half years ago, that also speaks of uh, Jesus clothed in majesty. Trembles at his voice. 
So before we receive God's blessing and go into uh, this rest of this day and this week, uh, I just need to say thank you. Thank you for connecting up. Uh, thank you for those that have been uh, messaging me through it from, from distant, distant places like Scotland and uh, those that are connecting up on, the, uh, on, on YouTube as well from even further afield. Is it Germany, I think? Uh, anyway, it's good to, to, to connect up in these times, to connect with one another to connect with God. So thank you. Thank you also those who are caring and connecting with, with people who, who we know can't access the, the live stream but are part of our church community. Uh, it's great to hear of those uh, who are able uh, looking after and keeping an eye on, on uh, other members of, the, members of the church community. Thank you for that. Be in church and being uh, in service with one another is, uh, is key to, to us as a community. Uh, if you want to connect up uh, after this service, half past ten. There's a, I think it's half past ten uh, till eleven o'clock. That there's a Zoom, Zoom coffee time. If you're able to to join that virtual coffee time, again a great time to connect up and chat. I know it's not easy to to chat on Zoom, but you can use the chat function, and it's sometimes it's just lovely to see others 
there, isn't it, and see our friends who we perhaps haven't seen for, for such a long time. Uh, we've got a uh, Zoom on at 11, at 11 o'clock. We're going to get home to the warmth of, our, of the rectory because it's a bit, little bit chilly here. Even though it's milder outside, the church always takes a few days to catch up with the temperature outside. So we're still on, on the freezing temperatures a couple of days ago. Anyway, yes, at 11 on Zoom. If you want the link for that, let me know. I can put you in touch. Uh, I'm going to be on a, a, a few, got a few days off now from Monday to Friday. So uh, apologies if you need a response to emails. Uh, don't, don't, if you need a quick response, don't email me, but, but contact uh, well, Elizabeth or Anne, the church wardens, or, or, uh, uh, and they'll, they can get a message through to me if it's, if it's really essential. But I'll be back next weekend. We've got Jane, who's going to be leading the beginning of our United service with our Methodists in the village. They're going to contribute to the service. Karen James will be preaching uh, and then I'll, I'll lead the communion uh, time and uh, we'll have, a, we'll have a, another uh, service of connection as well. Before that, though, it's Ash Wednesday this Wednesday. There won't be a service in the benefice, uh, as you might have seen on the email I sent out yesterday. But there is a, a Zoom service if you want to join it at 7 o'clock in the evening, led by um, our Rural Dean, Reverend Lucy Holt. And she's got Bishop Karen speaking at that. So I've sent the link out for that. If you've not had it, let me know and I can, I can let you know. Uh, at 5.30, there is a, a service you can join, a live stream from the Cathedral and Ash Wednesday uh, service. So um, if that's another alternative if you want to mark the, uh, mark the day. Uh, and then Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. And uh, as I said already, we've got these 40, well, there's a few more than 40 acts uh, and I'll put it on to the Advent calendar that, that, we use, that we used for Advent with those fantastic videos. This, I, I've sort of changed the colours and, uh, and I'm busy uploading the. There'll be a, a photo and a, um, a Bible verse and then a suggested action, a suggested thing that you can give out or, or give away or it might be words or encouragement or a note or, or something physical uh, to give away. Um, uh, for each day of uh, Lent and um, I'm, I'm, I'll send some emails and post it on Facebook as well hopefully I think that is all I need to say in terms of notices but uh, do stay in touch stay connected stay safe and uh, uh, it's good to it's good to, to be gathering together even if we only gathering virtually what am I doing now I uh, need to um, uh, let's receive God's blessing as we close the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us, remain with us and those we love and pray for now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Up on the bells, Carrie.